Hello everyone. My name is Sarah Pearls of Wisdom and Food with Keto. Blessedly under 20 carbs a day. And it is doable and you can have leafy greens and still enjoy a big old bowl of them um, and have them and feel like you're getting enough nutrition. I do take supplements. I just got an electrolyte powder raspberry Dr. Price's from Amazon. I think it was $12 for 30 packets. And um, I just had my first one today in my lemon water at lunchtime. It was delish. Um, no problem about it. And I put it in into my chronometer so it shows up as giving me sodium and magnesium and potassium um, and some calcium and some copper, some other trace minerals too. So I'm liking that. But that's but enough about me. Today's topic is you have a choice. You always have a choice when it comes to what you put into your mouth. And I would almost say there's three choices. The choice is making a choice for your health, meaning, yeah, I'll have a salad with a little protein on it, a good healthy fat on it, like um, Evu, or what I have is half evu and half macadamia nut oil and, um, you know, some veggies in it. Um, good, organic, dark green, leafy. I always look for the darkest green um, organic romaine lettuce. Usually my spinach is sautéed. I had Swiss chard uh, sautéed yesterday. Got the thumbs up from Greg, which means I will do it again. I followed the instructions that somebody uh, talked about, which is I softly boiled it for a little while to soften the pieces, and then I sautéed in, gosh, was it bacon fat? It was either bacon fat, coconut oil, or olive oil or butter. I can't even remember. It was yesterday. And um, delish. So that will go into the rotation of green leafies. Loved it. But anyway, you have three choices. And the first choice that you have is for your health. So when you say yes to a certain food, it's saying yes, I choose my health. I choose my keto under 20. The other one, the yes to the something that you probably know you shouldn't have, is saying yes to continued obesity and yes to continuing deteriorating health. Yep. And the third choice is no choice. <laughs> oh, I'm going to be a victim. He cooked it that way. What could I say? I didn't tell him I'm not supposed to have barbecue sauce. Or, um, you know, she was so sweet about it. Or I forgot to bring a lunch. And so when they ordered pizza, that's what I had. Instead of dashing out while everybody else was waiting for the pizza to be delivered, and getting yourself some sort of salad or green, you know, some sort of keto-friendly thing. Or maybe even a head of organic romaine lettuce and, you know, four ounces of turkey and two ounces of cheese and doing roll-ups. So you could be busy, busy making your little roll-ups while everybody else was having a non-keto, non-fathead pizza. So, when you say yes to your health, it's a healthy item and beverage. When you say no to your health, it is something that is probably not healthy for you. And when you say nothing at all, you are playing the victim martyr role and you will continue down your road to have either um, obesity issues, health issues, or both. And you are choosing to continue, just like choosing the item that you're not supposed to have. So no decision is making a decision as well. So with those three decisions, you are always faced with the choices. And if you are having a keto, high fat, moderate protein, and low carb sort of food plan, and there's nothing there that you can have, um, that's too bad. I can't believe that there's nothing at a place that you can have. There's nothing. I mean, sometimes we may have to opt for not having the balanced part that we can make when we're at home and we have more control. But if you're at some place and it's out of your control 
and there's not a cold cut or a meat or a salad entry um, and it's not doused in a bottled commercial salad dressing you know you have plenty of I bet I believe I'm just saying choices that you can make you know don't do the victim martyr thing you've already done that how many of your pounds that you want to lose are because you played victim and martyr and you didn't want to hurt somebody else's feelings so instead you sabotaged yourself you don't have to do that anymore come on this is the this is the grown-up health choice that you've made to go keto so that doesn't mean until something 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 happens or unless something 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 happens it means that you make a mature decision about what you're going to put in your mouth and if you can't put anything in your mouth if there's absolutely nothing all it is is bread and desserts <laughs> well then you're not going to eat but that's okay because there will be a time in the next couple of hours maybe it's continuing your intermittent fasting you know and you just don't have lunch at the crack of noon and you might have to go and get something at two or three as long as you're not caving to your health with choices that are about staying sick and staying overweight those choices on a continuing effort are going to make you sick and could make you sicker and more obese and what comes with more obesity more health issues so you know better when you know better you do better and so if if you have the worst boss in the world and i used to have the worst boss in the world i'm sure <laughs> you can't have her you don't want her um even then i might learn how to take that stand for myself and say look there is nothing here at this buffet that you brought in or whatever I have to go out and get something that I can eat and you know you can do it you can do it in the parameters of the store um, you're able to get you know a green leafy you are able to get some sort of olive oil if you have to buy the smallest olive oil on the shelves because you don't know what that olive oil is there that says olive oil you don't know it could be canola oil it could be soybean oil at the salad bar you know, never take a ladle of a salad dressing at a salad bar. You have no idea. So, okay, if you have to buy a head of romaine organic lettuce, or maybe you do do the salad bar and then you buy a little thing of the olive oil on your way out, or you buy a little thing of full-fat cottage cheese to put on it, a la, you know, the good old days where people had a scoop of cottage cheese on their salad. Even in a half a cup is only five carbs. And you have that on your salad. That's a five-carb lunch. Totally doable. Or you get the little bottle of olive oil, and that's great. Then you've got the little bottle that you can bring with you to other places when you're not quite sure what's going to be served. Or you could get even um, a yogurt and some organic nut butter. Um, or some little cheese, you know, the, the string cheese things. That's 100% cheese. Mozzarella. Some are even more than that. They're um, cheddar and provolone. I've seen pepper jack, I think. Um, so you can take care of yourself if you have to step out. If you're at a place that is a million miles away from food, well, then why didn't you think of that and bring your hard-boiled eggs and your whatnot with you to work? It takes preparation. It takes grown-up decisions. I'm going to work. I don't work anywhere near any place that can serve me I don't have any idea what they're going to serve what this company's coming in and going to bring for us to eat all we've heard is they're bringing something I have no shame I have no problem calling I've done that I've done that at baby showers and um, weddings that don't say what they're going to serve and I'll call and ask to speak to the chef or the person that's put you know the um what would it be the um wedding planner and just say what's on the menu and you know they've got it because they've charged the person that's paying for it <laughs> so you know what they're going to be serving and asking them and one time it was before it was um they they insisted on not just giving me an antipasto salad that i asked for and said i would pay for separately they insisted on making me something gluten-free but what could i say i just was 
you know, they, they were so insistent on it, and I told them I would be happy with a salad with meat with some olive oil, and, um, and so I kind of pushed it around on the plate and took from the, the salad that they offered there and um, just put olive oil on it. But take care of yourself. When you make a decision, which is yes to health, no to, to an item that it's like, um, you know, if you're having a dubious item, 5% of your 100% of your keto food plan, you might be doing okay. But if you're having 49% dubious items and 51% keto in a day, that's, that's not going to cut it. Keto is not that kind of food plan. It is not a Weight Watchers, I'll adjust as I go type of food plan. And if you're making no decision whatsoever and just scooping on, you know, the um, standard American diet of macaroni and cheese and lasagna and having, you know, two cookies that are this big at the end of the meal, you see them at the end of the buffet table, and you say, well, I'm leaving room for those. And you take a salad plate, and instead of putting salad on it, you put your two cookies. Because those things are non-negotiable. Because, mm, that's all they had. No. Stop it. You know better. And when you know better, you do better. And so, every time you make a choice and have something that's dubious, not on your food plan, too many carbs, contain sugars, artificial sweeteners, or grains, you are saying no to your health. You are saying, no, thank you. Doesn't matter what I've done up until now. Nope, I'm just having this. Or don't be a victim either and, and let somebody else make the decision for you. You know, even if it's as bad as somebody just brings in five pizzas and you don't have a choice for anything, eat the topping. That's it. Just take the cheese and toppings off of it and eat it. That is the worst case scenario. I've had lasagna on keto and absolutely pulled off the layers of the lasagna and had the meat, the cheese, and the sauce. It was a better bad decision for sure, a BBC better bad choice than just cutting into the lasagna and eating it and saying, hmm, I did. I just didn't want to look weird. Look weird. You know what looks weird? Is when you finally fit into a pencil skirt and then you eat your way out of it. That looks weird. So you don't want to do that. You want to make the decision for your health. A simple, small decision of yes. And every day that you yes decisions for your health all the way through the day, they are compounded. That's like compound interest, which is something that we don't even think about anymore. But we used to. Compounded interest was what made the difference. It's what makes the difference in our IRA and our savings accounts and everything else. So it's also with our keto decisions. Simple little yeses for our health all day long compound. And so you get to day 30 of following your keto under 20 strictly with discipline, with structure, with weighing and measuring, with planning and prepping, and no no decisions and no letting somebody else make a decision for you, you are a roaring, roaring success. And on day 31, when confronted yet again with a no to unhealthy eating or, or a no decision, which is a decision for unhealthy eating, you don't even think twice about it. You, eat, you would go without before you would have any of those choices. And it will happen. And you will, like, maybe come to a little bit and say, Wow, who am I? Look at me. This never happened before. Making a decision for my health, even if it means going without. And I've done that before. I've sat there with a sparkling water versus starting on anything I shouldn't have because I know where that can take me. Why? Because I've tried. I've tried to manage unhealthy food choices at, you know, events and places that I have no control. It's not my own kitchen or my own fridge. And it's a disaster because my addict wins. So I will go without. And um, I remember the guy, who's the magician? Why can't I think of him? Um, the magician who would join his friends while they did their big pig out feasts and he would have nothing but a sparkling water or black coffee or black tea or something like that. 
And at first they gave him a lot of grief, and then soon enough they weren't paying any attention to him and what he wasn't eating, and they just minded their own food business. And he got through it, you know, and that's how I would be. I would say, well, I'd rather have my big-ass salad when I get home because that's going to work for me. And I don't have it here now. I didn't bring it made. Next time I'll think of that because, you know, I've made tons of salads without the dressing, without the olive oil on them. I only like olive oil and brought them dry to places. And if I didn't have it, like say they had a keto-friendly meal there and I could have that, then the salad just sits there wrapped in the stretch tight till the next day. And it's not getting soggy and funky and weird. It's not. It's just as good the next day because I've done it. And so um, as long as you're not putting gloopy veggies on it, <laughs> and I, I don't on mine, um, nothing gets soft or mushy. Um, so take care of yourselves. The three decisions, think of them for your health, to contribute to your illness and your obesity, and to make no decision and fall into that self-sabotaging, I'm a victim, I'm a martyr place. You always want to choose A for your health today, like you did yesterday, and you hope to do tomorrow, which means planning, prepping, knowing ahead of time, forming the words, no thank you, putting stuff in your bag to take with you, either non-perishable things or putting a little ice pack in your little you know, insulated lunch thing and bringing it. And if they serve something that's fine, then you don't have to have it. It's there for tomorrow. And if they don't, your butt's covered. You'll feel better because you made a decision for your health. This has been Sarah, Pearls of Wisdom and Food, making those choices. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye for now.